This is technically not a smartwatch. It's a fitness tracker from 2011. It also has eight gigabytes of storage and can play music through headphones. Made by Motorola, this is called the Moto Active. And in this video, I'm gonna expose the hidden Android operating system and show that for some people, this was the very first Android smartwatch, providing you had the skills to hack it. In 2011, smartwatches didn't really exist. There were a few early attempts, such as the Fossil Palm Watch, or the Microsoft Spot, or even strapping an iPod to your wrist. But it wasn't until the Pebble launched in 2013 that the whole smartwatch revolution really started to kick off all this makes the 2011 Moto Active a unique product for its time. I've had this one for many years. Mine has a damaged LCD, and I'm not sure how this could have happened. It's just been sitting in a box. I don't use fitness trackers. They tend to motivate me to lie down until the need to exercise passes. I have managed to collect quite a number of them, though they're mostly broken or don't have charging cables. And one of them that I have here is a second Moto Active. This one looks okay from the outside, but it doesn't power up. The LCD looks okay, and I'm hoping that it does work. So I'm gonna take this apart and see if I can use it to fix my other one. And these are fairly easy to take apart, though I'm not a fan of the clips holding the front on. Inside, there are two ribbon cables to unclip and unplug. The main board is held in with a single Torx screw, which I can't help but to remove to have a look at the main board. The main board turns out to be two boards sandwiched together. There's a very large Toshiba chip on one side, which I'm gonna guess is the eight gigabytes of flash memory. The rest is hidden under shielded cans, so I can't really go any further. Onto the second unit now, and this one looks to be in much better physical condition. Taking the second main board out, I think we can see the problem. This one looks like it has some severe water damage. These things are not particularly water resistant in their design. I'm gonna take the main board from the first unit and put it into this one. With that done, I'm able to turn it on and it looks like it all works. It's now time to connect this to my Windows 7 laptop using just a standard micro USB cable. The Moto Active mounts itself and brings up the auto installer for the Motocast software. This software gives the ability to upload MP3s into the unit. It also gives you basic access to the file system, which is the first indication that this is actually running on Android. Motocast also allows you to download all your fitness tracking from the unit, but with all of the online servers having been shut down years ago, none of these functions work any longer. It's now time to go over to the XDA forums where we can find ClearDroid's posts about routing and modifying the Moto Active, including links to ClearDroid's webpage, which hosts the Moto Active root tool. This is an easy to use tool with everything you need to start customizing your Moto Active. The team did a great job doing all this, and I have to show the credits here. The root process is easy and quick. With the Moto Active turned off, hold down volume down and power, and plug it back into the USB. The whole process is automated, and the motor active restarts when the whole process is completed. With the bootloader now reflashed, I can now reboot into the recovery bootloader. This gives a lot of options over the Android operating system inside, including updating the system to a custom ROM. ClearDroid has also made a flash tool for flashing custom ROMs, but I prefer to upload the custom ROM into the internal storage and then flash them using the recovery bootloader.
I'm trying here is ClearDroid's fairly basic custom ROM, but it does contain everything you need to get started, including a copy of the Google Play Store for downloading and running apps. But I did seem to have some problems getting the Wi-Fi to connect, so instead I'm using the command line and the adb install command. With this, I can install local apps onto the ROM. And the first one I'm going to try is the game Angry Birds. This was one of the headline apps that was announced you could run. I particularly like this headline which describes turning your Moto Active into a tablet for ants. And Angry Birds is actually surprisingly playable on here, despite its tiny size. Another game that I found works and is almost playable is Osmos. The touch controls seem to work fairly well in a watch-based environment. And if you're wondering if this can play Doom, I wasn't able to find an Android Gingerbread compatible port of Doom, though I was able to find this other first-person shooter, showing just how ridiculous it is to play this sort of game on a watch. There were a number of other custom ROMs made for this device, but unfortunately most are no longer available, with many of the file hosting services having failed to keep them online. I was able to find a copy of the RunKeeper ROM, which I'm again using the recovery bootloader to install this ROM from the inbuilt storage. This ROM comes with a few more apps built in and a few additional functions. And this time I'm able to get the Wi-Fi working okay. And I'm not really sure why I wasn't able to get it working on the previous ROM. I was also able to get Google Maps working without a problem. Google Maps is something that always seems to work no matter how old the version of the app you're running. Though I wasn't able to get the inbuilt YouTube app working and I did try installing a second version, but wasn't able to get that one working either. I was able to install a Firefox browser and found that works fine, as long as you're happy browsing web pages on your watch. Which raises the question, what else is this thing good for? The demo scene continues to generate some of the most creative graphics and music. I've yet to explore any of the Android scene demos that have been created and this seems like a good way to get started, at least on some of the earlier Android demos. It's one of my favourite art forms, and I really like the way there are demos created for just about every platform and every device you can imagine. The Moto Active has no inbuilt speaker, so to get audio I either need to plug something into the headphone socket or use the Bluetooth audio function, such as with this Bluetooth speaker. Some of these demos really push the hardware, especially on such an early and small Android device. And I did find one demo that seems to run at a fairly low frame rate. This gives me an opportunity to try overclocking my Moto Active. Normally the CPU runs at about 300 to 600 megahertz, depending on the load requirements. However, running an overclock, we can run the Moto Active at up to one gigahertz. With the overclock active, I can definitely see an improved frame rate. However, this demo is still quite demanding. With everything set up, I now need to decide how I'm gonna carry this. I do really like the idea of using the clip. It makes the device fairly small and it can be clipped onto many different locations. But for the moment, I think I'll use the watch band because it's kind of awesome to have scene demos running on your wrist. <laughs> 